Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, over the New Year break just gone, I read Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Quentin Tarantino's first novel. So, has Tarantino managed to transfer his screenplay success to a prose novel? Let's find out. The first thing to say is that the book is not a direct novelization of the film. It focuses on the same characters, obviously, uh, it's set mostly in the same period of time and it does hit a number of the same story beats as the film does, but it's not a direct retelling. Tarantino chooses to effectively offer us sort of a remix here. The best way to describe it would be to call it a supplementary material. It offers another look at the characters, exploring them a bit further uh, to a mixed bag of results. But before we talk further about the book, how is the writing? This, after all, is Tarantino's first go at a full-length prose novel. And I would say that you can certainly tell that he isn't used to, or perhaps isn't fully confident to, this form of writing. It's small things that give it away, like overusing the characters' names. Tarantino has a habit here of constantly using a character's name, even when there is only one character present. So it means that the prose often doesn't flow that well. And in a strange way, it almost feels like Tarantino is replacing all the pronouns with his characters' names uh, in a struggle to remember who it is that he's writing about at times. He also tends to overuse different descriptors for speech, which is often a sign of a newer writer. So characters will assure or instruct ponder or draw. He stumbles into patches of this and at these points the dialogue gets a little kind of swamped and doesn't flow. Which is a shame since predictably the dialogue is one of the stronger elements in the book uh, and that really comes through when the clutter around it is dropped and it's given the space to breathe. Overall the writing itself isn't too bad. I've certainly seen worse in published novels. Tarantino overall has a fairly straightforward, efficient style to his prose. The main tell though that this is his first novel is how often the book slips into just being essentially the thoughts of Tarantino on various things when we're supposed to be looking at those things from the point of view of one of the characters. With his characters all being involved in the film industry or cinephiles, we often get lengthy sections about, well, film. For example, when we get Cliff Booth's thoughts on European cinema of the 60s, we're not really getting Cliff's thoughts, we're getting Tarantino's, but expressed through Cliff. With these passages failing to put across the character whose point of view we're supposed to be in, and it does mean that some of the other sections end up on some rocky ground. For example, when we're given insight into various characters' views on women, we end up in a kind of strange place in some murky waters, as we wonder how much of these standpoints belong to the character and how much belongs to the writer, because as previously mentioned, other sections are fairly transparently Tarantino putting his voice into another person's head, so to speak. And taking that into account, I did at certain points feel the book was a little problematic as Tarantino is a figure that I do sometimes struggle to give the full benefit of the doubt to, especially when there are some slightly troubling aspects to some of his behaviour that have been raised and discussed, though I'm not really going to go into that here. Okay, so we've spoken a little about the writing, but what about the content of the book? Uh, as I've mentioned, it's more of a side piece that supplements the film rather than a direct novelization of it that you could replace the film with. It essentially serves to give us a bit of a further look into the characters in the film, uh, focusing mainly on Rick, which is DiCaprio's part, Cliff, which is Brad Pitt, and Sharon, which was Margot Robbie, uh, with a few shorter looks at this world's take on the Manson family sort of in between. Out of those, it is Rick that comes off the best, I would say, as more depth is given to his arc of moving from being bitter at the state of his career 
to accepting that he probably had the career that he deserved. Early on, Rick blames others for his faltering career, but as we follow him through a guest appearance on a TV show, his interactions with a young actress in particular help him to reassess things and lead him to accepting the position that he's in, coming to realize that he probably did have the best career he could have had given his talent. The real shame in terms of Rick's characterization is that Tarantino tells us a number of times that Rick would probably be diagnosed as bipolar in modern times. Unfortunately, it is something that we as readers are told rather than really shown in any detail. We do see Rick struggle with his emotions in an early scene at an agent's office, but otherwise we just don't see that much behavior from him that would lead to such a diagnosis. It feels a little like Tarantino was looking for a way to make Rick's drinking something other than the kind of fairly standard actor has alcohol dependency issues type of portrayal that we do see quite commonly. But overall, I would say that Rick comes out of the novel as a more rounded and more likable character than he did in the film. In the middle of the pack, so to speak, is the portrayal of Sharon. Overall, we don't actually learn much more about her. She is confident, she is aware that her looks can be a tool for her, as well as something that causes people to reduce her to just being a pretty girl. She's portrayed as nice, which is slightly damning, because it just means that there is nothing that interesting about her here. And I do wonder if this is partly down to Tarantino being cautious about fictionalizing a real person who was central to a real tragedy. There are a couple of short sections from Anson's point of view here uh, and these are also fairly bland and they largely play on the suggestion that a failed attempt at a music career was at least partially one of the factors that drove Manson's eventual behaviour. But much like the film, uh, Manson and his family are pretty minor characters. In fact, this is more so a case in the book, as the text actually doesn't directly cover the reimagined events that form the climax of the film. Coming off the worst is Cliff. In the film, Brad Pitt's inherent charm is a big part of why Cliff works as a character and why as an audience we are quite happy to sort of follow him around. With that removed, Cliff comes across as more as the sociopath that he is. Something that is truly underlined with the confirmation in the book that Cliff is responsible for not only killing his wife, but also that he is guilty of two other murders and seems to take pride from the number of men he killed during combat in the Second World War. The book version of Cliff is a cynical man who looks down upon pretty much everyone but Rick and does demonstrate some fairly appalling attitudes towards women. So it's a strange choice that in large sections of the book, Cliff is effectively Tarantino's standing, as it's Cliff who is shown to be the cinephile and who has the longest internal monologues about various aspects of cinema and various film movements. Uh, and he does, as I say, end up being a pretty unlikable character. Aside from the characters themselves, the other main thing to talk about is the structure of the novel. As mentioned, it doesn't actually follow the same beats as the film, with things like Rick's time making westerns in Europe, and even the Manson family invasion of Rick's home being only mentioned in passing. It does make the novel something more than just a retelling of the film, which is appreciated, but some of the choices that are made are a bit strange. For example, three chapters are focused on telling us the story of the TV show Rick is guest starring in, as if it were real, like the chapters have been spliced in here from a western novel. It's very odd. I was waiting for the payoff of what these chapters covering totally different characters in a totally different setting was going to be, but it never really comes. And I do kind of wonder if the first draft came in short and Tarantino needed to pad the length out. And the way that Tarantino has approached the structure also means that the book just kind of drifts along before just sort of stuttering to an end. It is a series of vignettes rather than anything else. 
uh, and it does kind of give you the sense that a lot of this material is perhaps background materials from when Tarantino put the script together. Stuff that he may have worked up to help him get an angle on his characters as he's writing the screenplay. Overall, I would say take a look at the book if you enjoyed the film or, or generally a Tarantino fan. But otherwise, it's not one I'd recommend that strongly. It's not bad, but there's not really a lot here that is that engaging. And I think, honestly, if I had not seen the film beforehand, I probably would have given up on the book before finishing it. Anyway, there's some short thoughts on Quentin Tarantino's first venture into prose writing. I'll be back with another video for you soon.